In your headlines, military soldiers have arrived in the Turks and Caicos. Honorable Jamel Robinson says TCI is clear from post-COVID condition. From the PTV Broadcasting Headquarters in Providencial is your number one source for news. I'm Erica Pinales delivering the latest from across the country this Wednesday, July 6, 2022, right to your door. News Watch starts now. A contingent of British military soldiers have arrived in the Turks and Caicos Islands to train members of the Turks and Caicos Islands Regiment. Take a look. A contingent of 16 members of the British military arrived in the Turks and Caicos Islands on Sunday, July 3rd. The purpose of their visit, as we learn, is to train the second cohort of recruits for the TCI regiment and provide further developmental training in soldiering, humanitarian assistance, and disaster relief for the current Marines. Both trainings are scheduled to run simultaneously along each other at the Luis Garland High School in Providenciales from the 10th of July to July 25th, 2022. The training for the recruits would cover topics such as TCI regiment values and standards, diversity and inclusion, battlefield casualty medical, crowd management, marking helicopter landing sites, patrolling, weapon handling, field hospital setup, and hazard management, among other areas. The senior Marines would be trained in subjects such as law of armed conflict, military assessment and analysis, humanitarian assistance and planning, executing disaster relief operations, vehicle recovery, use of power tools, casualty evacuation procedures and tracking, field hospital setup, weapon handling and live firing, among other areas. The training is expected to culminate with a passing out parade at 5 p.m. on Saturday, July 23, 2022, at the Gustavus Lightburn Sports Complex. The acting governor, Her Excellency Annie Williams, met with the British military contingent on Monday, July 4, 2022, and thanked the team for their support of the TCI regiment, particularly in regards to the upcoming recruitment exercise for new Marine reserves, as well as the training and development offered to the existing members of the regiment. A unit dedicated to protecting the rights of victims and witnesses of crime is now in place and already in the works. Take a look. Victims and witnesses of crime in the TCI are now being offered some form of legal support. With the operationalization of the Victims and Witnesses of Crime Support Unit through the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. The unit, which already has in place a Director of Business Operations and a Support Officer, was introduced to the public on June 24. Its aim is to provide help and support services to victims and witnesses of crime, treating them humanely and with understanding of the trauma they may have or are experiencing. Queen's Counsel Eugene Otonier, who heads the DPP's office, gave a tremendous amount of credit for the realization of the unit to the Chief Justice Mabel Argyman. He says that even though he and the Commissioner of Police had previously spoken about support for victims and witnesses, they had no idea how to get it off the ground. But then in comes a new Chief Justice, in the height of a global pandemic, with boundless enthusiasm and determination. In the handling of victims of crime, the lack of consideration, the lack of appreciation of emotional distress and all the inability to recognize the trauma that sometimes accompanies crime has been the bane of the criminal justice system. She said more, but this is just brief of what she said. As a way forward, if you know the Chief Justice, she talks, but she walks. And in this particular meeting, she said, the Victim and Witness Care and Support Program, we will take off with it, whatever it takes. And she said this, the Criminal Justice Stakeholder Group is well placed to provide a solution to this problem in order that our work will not be rendered nuggetary, our victories pyrrhic, and justice be subjected to mockery. This was the impetus that set the ball rolling for the establishment of the Victims and Witness Support Unit.
The DPP says funding for the unit has already been provided by the government, with the appropriation of money for the appointment of two witness support officers, as well as furniture and equipment for the unit. Mary Thompson has been appointed the Director of Business Operation and has already gotten to work with the support of the first support officer, staff of the DPP and other stakeholders. Accommodations are being procured by the estate management of the government with offices in Providence Yalis and Grand Turk. The director says the government is back in the unit fully, with all current funding coming from the territory's purse. Under the unit, training is being provided for support officers, prosecutors, police officers, law enforcement agents, and anyone else who will meet a victim in their investigation of a crime. At whatever point in time they will meet the victim in their investigation, for example, at the earliest time the witnesses show up, they must know how to treat them and how to deal with them with care, value them, and support them. And in this regard, we are looking at United Kingdom funded training through the governor's office as I speak. We have also sought with positive results and feedback training interventions from regional and international resource persons and institutions, including the UNICEF. Just this week, the Trinidad and Tobago Victim and Witness Support Unit graciously shared their more than 10 years experience and best practices with Ms. Thompson and her team. A couple of months ago, the prosecutors received an insight or some insights on victim and witness care and support from our very own Justice Shiraz Aziz. He sensitized them to the expectations of the judiciary on securing, protecting, and preserving the interests of victims and witnesses. For PTV News Watch, I am Delana Els. It's time for a quick break. More News Watch when we return. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza, Providence Chalice, Midis Plaza, North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotia Bank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to News Watch. Post-COVID condition is making headlines, but is it something we should be worried about? Minister of Health and Human Services, Honorable Jamel Robinson, brings you the details. While much remains unknown about the impact of this post-COVID condition, medical professionals around the globe say that health systems must prepare for the long term. However, our minister doesn't think that Turks and Caicos will be impacted by the condition. I don't think the impact will be great because we do have the vaccination mandate in place. And what the vaccine allows, meaning that all the tourists that come in having to be vaccinated outside of a medical exemption, which is um, given very sparingly, is that if they are in, the chances of them um, spreading the virus or becoming significantly sick while in country is reduced because of that. And hopefully most persons would have taken their booster shot by now, which would kind of re-up their, their immunity towards COVID-19. This is in addition to the various um, strands of 
um, COVID-19 being um, less um, impactful, so to speak, in terms of causing severe illness, um, even though there's still uh, ability for it to spread. So we still have cases that are um, kind of fluctuating between um, 25 to 35 um, on a weekly basis, meaning um, in terms of the total active amount of cases that we see in any one particular day or during a week. But that is more than manageable given everything we've been through so far. Although the Minister of Health says it's unlikely that the Turks and Caicos would be greatly affected by the long COVID or post-COVID condition, he still acknowledged that persons who might be affected by this will need proper medical attention. We have our health care system that's in place clearly. So persons who need the additional treatment that they might might have um, they just need to access the, the facilities whether it's from a primary health care standpoint whether it's um, the visits to the hospital that are here locally so we can get a, ahead of and on top of any particular ailments they might have from what is considered um, long COVID so there's a likelihood that there will be some some type of spike in relation to persons who had or who might have um, long COVID, even though that's a smaller percentage of all overall persons who would have had COVID, the COVID-19 disease, particularly those who would have had uh, the stronger strands, so your deltas and your um, earlier variants. So that's something that we can monitor and pay attention to. As multiple health organizations are calling for increased support for patients with post-COVID condition and for health systems to acknowledge this long-lasting effect of the pandemic and help address it, the minister was inquired on if the Turks and Caicos' health systems are ready for the long term. In terms of that, um, is that clearly any system can be improved and that's what we are working on here in the Ministry of Health. But I would also say that Compared to many health systems in the region, I think we have one of the best in terms of your access to health care because we have a system between the primary health care, secondary health care, which is provided by the TCI hospitals and the NHIB program where we have access to tertiary care through the treatment abroad program where almost or just about in any situation you have access to some level of um, care. It's just a matter of where you access it. So what you don't have available um, on island, meaning in country, then we would refer you to over an overseas provider, which is a complete package. So essentially we have universal health care. So while there are places where we can improve it throughout the whole entire chain of our health care system, which we are working on and which is my focus, particularly coming out of um, the COVID-19 pandemic, the mechanism is in place to provide health care like many other countries only wish they could have. Also, one crucial thing to recognize of the impact that post-COVID condition has on people's lives is mental health issues. If the challenge were to present itself, Honorable Robinson assures that our mental health department is getting ready. I think we're getting ready and that's why we would have invested in setting up the new medical health facility in Grand Turk, which hopefully before the end of the next quarter will be functional. We've already hired the additional staffing complement to be able to run such an organization that will allow us to deal with any new cases that are likely to come on because of the stresses of COVID-19 in addition to the, the, the patients that we have outside of the country in Jamaica and other places can come back home and actually receive treatment and care locally. So we aren't there yet, but we've put in all the pieces where we'll be in a very good position. And of course, if additional resource needs arise um, over the coming years, then clearly we would want to respond to that and make the appropriate preparation. And one of the things that we are doing within the ministry is having a greater focus on primary health care, because if we can curb the need to utilize secondary and tertiary care, within the system, then we can provide savings. And those savings can be used to things like mental health, um, primary health care in general, as well as our response capabilities within the Ministry of Health. So we're trying to curb some of the things, um, the long-term issues that we experience as a, as a young nation. Um, so we're in a position to be able to better focus the resources that we do have at our fingertips.
Newswatch has gathered that rehabilitation is one of the three R's to combat this condition. Managing post-COVID condition requires a multidisciplinary approach with physical therapists, occupational and speech therapists, mental health professionals, nurses and doctors working together in a holistic manner. But we have all the components and those components work together hand in glove where there is synergy between the various levels of primary health care, the secondary health care, the hospitals, as well as the tertiary health care provider. So in the instance of that team, so you have what we call the Joint Referral Committee, which does a lot of um, collaboration for persons, and they will review whether or not persons need to seek help overseas or whether it's be able to be provided here. So there is, between the ministry, the hospitals, and primary health care, the mechanism by which persons who need the assistance can get it. And as the minister assured that our medical team is trained and equipped adequately to manage patients with COVID, he says that the team will monitor cases, or in other words, be on the lookout. As people present themselves specifically with any ailments to the healthcare system, whether it's from a primary health care need, or secondary health care need in terms of if they have to interface with the hospitals. That is essentially the mechanism which will be utilized to treat them and give them access to um, the hospital. So you can have your regular clinic visits where you can meet primary health care nurses and or doctors at that level or utilizing the clinics on the various islands throughout the Turks and Caicos Islands outside of the ones that are set up within the TCI hospitals. And if you, your ailment can't be treated, then it could be um, passed up to the TCI hospitals and or you can't um, forget the private sector medical facilities that are available as well. So you might just be visiting your personal doctor if you don't want to interact with primary health care. So should the long term effects of COVID be something for the Turks and Caicos population to worry about? We aren't completely out of the woods of the COVID-19 COVID pandemic. So continue to exercise caution and, and, and protect yourselves. Um, ideally, you wouldn't want to catch COVID in general if you could avoid it, um, generally speaking. Um, clearly, long COVID for those who, who have caught it or who have gotten the conditions um, designated as long COVID, it isn't going to be an easy road back to recovery overall. So it isn't ideal. So you would want to avoid it if possible. And the only way to avoid it is not to get COVID in the, in the first instance. So do what you can to protect yourselves and, and be safe. Don't touch that remote, we'll be right back. Coming up next is your weather forecast. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Mydees Plaza, North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Here at People's Television, we're more than just your leading news and entertainment services. We are spreading the gospel. We are breaking barriers. We are preserving the culture. Each one, teach one. We are committed to excellence. We're creating change. We are creating memories. We are the future! I am
am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. We are PTV. We are PTV. We are continuing the legacy. We are PTV. Welcome back to News Watch. Here's the latest in your weather forecast. For the nation's capital, Grand Turk, scattered thunderstorms, high 83, low 80, winds east at 20 to 30 miles per hour. For South Caicos, scattered thunderstorms, high 84, low 80, winds east at 20 to 30 miles per hour. For North and Middle Caicos, isolated showers, high 84, low 80, winds east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For Paired and Pine Key, isolated showers, high 84, low 80, winds east at 20 to 30 miles per hour. And on Providenciales, isolated showers, high 84, low 80, winds east at 20 to 30 miles per hour. Now for your sunrise and sunset, sunrise 6, 12 a.m., sunset 7, 37 p.m., and for your high tides and low tides, high tides 1, 46 a.m., 2, 27 p.m., and low tides 7, 58 a.m., 8, 46 p.m. And for your hurricane outlook, for the North Atlantic, Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico, tropical cyclone formation is not expected during the next five days. And that's it for your weather forecast and hurricane outlook. And that brings us to the end of this edition of The Real News. I hate to leave you so soon, but of course, you can join us right back here every weekday at 6.30 p.m. and tap into our social media platforms at www.ptv8tci.com. I'm Erica Pinales, keeping you informed, updated, and affiliated. Until next time.